Tonight, the Trojans of Troy are in the house to take on the Wolverines of UVU. Just 11 days ago, these two went double overtime. Tonight, it's the rematch. It's all coming up next, right here on UVU TV. Looking live at the UCCU Center in Orem, Utah, on the campus of Utah Valley University. Tonight, the Wolverines of UVU entertaining the Trojans of Troy University. Both teams coming in here, five and seven. Both teams got something to prove. Hello again, everybody. Jim McCullough along with Matt Peterson. You know, yeah, they're both five and seven, Matt. And uh, UVU is coming off kind of a disappointing loss against Utah State on this floor. But they're playing a team that they just played, what, last week? So how does that all work into their psyche? Well, coming off a victory, a double overtime victory against Troy in their yeah. last meeting, it should give them a lot of confidence coming into this game. Obviously a tough loss on Saturday night against Utah State. Had a couple days to prepare for Troy. They're already going to be very familiar with the team. So I think they should be pretty confident coming into tonight's game, knowing that they've already beat this team and beat them on the road. Yeah, it was a heck of a game down in Troy, Alabama, uh, about 11 days ago. UVU forced overtime as Holton Hunsaker put up a, just a prayer of a shot that was off. Uh, Alfonso Hubbard grabbed it and put it in to send it to the first overtime. Then in second overtime, the teams played even, and then UVU went on an 8 nothing run in the, in, in the second overtime, rather, to win it in double overtime. Uh, Coach Dick Hunsaker called that one of the most exciting games he's ever coached here at UVU. However, now you've beaten them on the road. They're coming here. Is it kind of a letdown? I, I don't think so because I've always believed that how the Wolverines prepare is they're going to be ready for every game and every opponent. So I don't think they'll be allowed to be let down. And plus, it was a tough game. You know, one break yeah. one way or the other, Troy could have easily come out with the victory. So I think they'll be well prepared for tonight's game and they should come out very focused. Lots of players in double figures in that double overtime game, including Holton Hunsaker, career high 32, Ray Chambers for Troy, career high 18. So key players that you're looking for tonight, Matt. Yeah, we're going to take Probably a, those two, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, we look at those two players knowing what they've done and knowing what they've done against the respective teams here. So, you know, when we take a look for the Wolverines, we, as we talked about, uh, we've got Holden Hunsaker. First, we're going to take a look at Ray Chambers, as you said. In that first game, 17 points and eight rebounds. He averages six and a half points per game on the season. So the Wolverines are going to be well prepared to know what he's capable of. We've got Holden Hunsaker, as you mentioned that last game, 32 points, five three-pointers, yeah. eight assists in the game. And as you mentioned, he had all those assists after halftime. So yeah. Holton is going to be a key player for the Wolverines, Ray Chambers for Troy, and we'll see how those two players play throughout the game. All right, so keys to victory if you're on UVU side of things tonight. Yeah, taking a look for keys to the victory, I, I think that they got to do a lot of things that they did in Troy. They got to rebound the ball a lot better than what they did against Utah State. However, they were thoroughly beaten on the boards by the Aggies. They've got to get Ben Aird involved early. Typically, they do that here at home. Look for them to get some plays inside early on to him and a better sh shot selection. They struggled at points and at times against the Aggies with their shot selection. They didn't shoot as well as they normally do. So look for all of these keys to tie in to what they're going to try to do in tonight's game. All right, we're going to hold you those keys. We'll probably put them up at least once during the game to see how good you are tonight. Tell you what, we're going to take a break. Back with more Costa Vida pregame show, starting lineups, and your opening tip. Troy University and Utah Valley coming your way next right here on UVU TV.
Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. At UVU, you can graduate with a diploma and a resume. Welcome back to the UCCU Center. Troy University and Utah Valley getting set to go at it. Both teams five and seven. Troy comes in here from Troy, Alabama. They are led by Coach Don Maestri. When you talk about Don Maestri, Matt, uh, not many people here in Utah have heard of him, but boy, he's been around Alabama forever. Yeah, 31, 31st season. And uh, quite an impressive record, 493 and 390. Exactly. Starting lineups for Troy. Antoine Myers, Emil Jones, Hunter Williams, Deontay Jethro, and Ray Chambers, the five starters for the Trojans out of Troy University, averaging 62 points a game, giving up 67 points a game. Uh, they won their last outing against Georgia State by one point. So maybe they've got things turned around a little bit. Yeah, they're five and seven. They're two and four away from home, though. The last meeting between these two was just 11 days ago, and it went double overtime. Uh, quite frankly, Utah Valley came from way back. They were 12 down at one point to, to force the first overtime and took them uh, two overtimes to win it. Ended up winning that one 86-82 in double overtime. So the uh, Wolverines were very happy to get out of Troy, Alabama with a, with a win on that one. The guy to watch, I think, for Troy, Matt, is uh, not only Ray Chambers, but Emil Jones. He's their leading scorer, but just at 10 points a game. But uh, He's a pretty fast young man, 6'3", senior. In fact, their tallest starter is only 6'6". That's Chambers. Yeah, they're they're more of a small team. They play a lot more with smaller lineups than they do with big lineups, and so it'll be interesting to see how the Wolverines match up when you know they have Ben Aird on the court and they have Nick Thompson and, and Alfonso Hubbard, some of their bigger players. So the I think he will be a key player to watch. Our At four. A 6'4 senior from Gallup, New Mexico, number 20, Alfonso Hubbard. The other forward, a 6'9 senior from Clearfield, Utah, number 22, Nick Thompson. At center, a 6'9 junior from Bonneville, Utah, number 34, Big Ben Air. At guard, a 6'3 junior from Rosita, California, number 11, Jason Johnson. And the other guard, a 6'0 junior from North Salt Lake, number 12, Holton Hunziger. Head coach of the Wolverines is Dick Hunziger, with assistants Mike Kelly, Steve Payne, Paul Moss, and Sean Deadweiler. There you see Coach Dick Hunsaker in his 11th season here at UVU, 192 wins. He's done a nice job here at UVU. That was our arena announcer, Eric Allen, with the voice of the uh, UCC arena. He doesn't normally talk like that, by the way, except when he's on a microphone or speaking to his wife. That's the only time That's he talks. He does it. That's yeah. right, kind of like good, you. That's good practice. <laughs> exactly. Troy University, five and seven. Utah Valley University, five and seven. UVU, two and one at home. Their only loss just a few nights ago, right here on this floor to Utah State. Ben Aird will jump center. Ray Chambers, the fellow you talked about in the pregame show, had 17 points against UVU last week. Counters at 6'6", six, six, their tallest starter. And look at that. Ray Chambers controls the tip. He can jump. <laughs> As, you, as we pointed out, they do have a smaller lineup on the on the floor. Deontay Jethro gives over to Jones. Working on the right side, that's Williams. 1.2, this is the first post-up that they have. It's just been a perimeter game so far. All their perimeter players out, just doing dribble handoffs and keeping it a perimeter game so far. Five seconds on the shot clock. Inside the Chambers. This is the first one of the evening and Alfonso Hubbard with a rebound. 
UVU's first touch. 45 seconds deep here. Glad you're with us. This one might just end up going two, three, four overtimes. Who knows? Nick Thompson, turnaround, jumper, can't get it to go. Rebound comes down to Chambers. Yeah, that was a well-executed play, though. There was a number of screens that were set, number of down screens, and ended up with Nick Thompson in the post. Jethro misses that one. It'll be UVU basketball. A couple stats I, I wanted to point out, Jim. Troy on the season hasn't shot the ball really well. Uh, they do shoot about 40% from the field. They are 32% from the three-point line, and uh, just a, just a shade under 70% from the free throw line. So I think that plays into the Wolverines' hand as they're not they're not the best shooting team that the Wolverines have, have faced. Hunsaker and Antoine Myers get tangled up here right in front of our position courtside. It'll be UVU basketball. And we've seen in these home games uh, when UVU has a lot of success, they're able to establish a post presence early on in the game, and they've tried to do that so far. Look for them to post up again here. Hunsaker feeds inside to Nick. Little turnaround jump hook, good. And that's where they feel they have a clear advantage. You've got Deontay Jethro who's guarding Nick Thompson and the last two possessions of getting the ball inside, allowing Nick to create. You know, that's gonna be a mismatch for the Wolverines. Two nothing with two minutes gone. Both these teams kind of like a low scoring game. That just plays into each of their hands. Shot missed that time by Emil Jones. Harvard with another rebound. Alfonso in the lane. Can't get it to go down. Troy comes away with a rebound. Good push there from Alfonso. He lost possession in the middle of the court, was able to rebound it. Just wasn't able to get the layup to fall. Three pointer, Jethro. Alfonso Hubbard pulls down yet another rebound. It's three already here in the first two and a half minutes of this game. And we go back into the post here with Nick Thompson. No surprise there. He's, he's had success early on. It'll belong to UVU. All right, I don't see a lot of intensity, Matt. I, I'm not an yeah. expert at this, but it just doesn't feel intense to me yet. Yeah, I think, you, I think you're right. I think neither team really has shown a whole lot of intensity to start with. Maybe just getting the flow, getting into the game. I, I have no doubt that the intensity will pick up here. Jason Johnson misses it. Colton Hunsaker diving for it. Carries the ball out of bounds with him. It'll be Troy basketball. Now that's hustle that any coach loves to see. I mean, even though Holton didn't come up with that basketball, sacrificing his body so that the Troy player wasn't able to come up with an incredible effort there from Holton. Emil Jones with it. Troy looking for their first points. I'll get a fresh 35 to work with. Three minutes deep. Troy yet to score, a team that averages 62 points a game. Emil Jones inside. Nope. Ben Aird might have got a partial block on it. He blocked seven shots against Troy last week. Colton Hensager with a basketball calls the play for UVU. Thompson over to Holton again. Inside Ben. Really nice play there. There was a screen out on the wing by Nick Thompson, allowed Holton to come off, had a clear passing lane. Just as he came off that screen, Ben Aaron able to duck in and gets rewarded and makes the layup. Myers jumper won't go. Troy fighting for the rebound. Jones pulled it down. Myers kicks it out. Four minutes gone in this game. Troy yet to score a point. Inside the Chambers, nothing there. Kicks it outside to Jethro. Troy working around, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Williams will take a long jumper. UVU comes away with it. Jason Johnson on the run. Feeds inside Nick. What a pass from Jason Johnson. Yeah, really nice job there. That, that was all led by the defensive effort from UVU. Great defense. They get the ball off of the air ball, and they're out and running and get rewarded with a layup. It all starts with their defense on that transition basket. And, of course, Troy immediately, Coach Don Maestri jumps up and wants to take a timeout. He's seen his team go 14 and almost 14 and a half minutes here to start this game scoreless. Yeah. 6-0 UVU. 
So he wanted to take a quick time out and talk to his team about offense and defense. Yeah, I think it's been a couple things. The, the Wolverines have forced the Trojans into a number of different three, you know, long three-point shots. They haven't allowed really anything at the basket. And they haven't allowed a lot of dribble penetration. Ben Aird, as we talked about this small lineup that Troy goes with, puts a lot of pressure on Ben Aird. And he's done a, a spectacular job guarding the perimeter. Nick Thompson did as well. And Alfonso Hubbard has done a really nice job guarding maybe players who, who are smaller than what they're used to guarding. So they give a lot of credit to UVU so far with their perimeter defense and forcing long outside shots. Nick Thompson takes a seat for a breather, replaced by Zach Jones in the lineup for UVU. You see this offense from Troy, there's no real post up. It's all five out, a lot of dribbling, a lot of screening, a lot of driving to the basket. They don't have a post presence in there. Jumper outside, that one's good from Emil Jones. So Troy University finally on the scoreboard. Just shy of 15 or five minutes gone in this game. Yeah, and good shot. I mean, you force a long jumper, you don't allow any penetration. So, really nice job of forcing a long jumper. Let's take to Ben Eric slapped out of bounds. Ben trying to find Fonz inside. That'll bring us to our first media timeout. Just under 15 minutes to play. First half, a low scoring 6 to 2 lead for UVU. over Troy. Troy not well known around these here parts. Troy, Alabama, just south of Montgomery. Oh boy, founded in 1887, 30,000 students, members of the Sun Belt Conference. It's a phenomenal campus with tremendous athletic facilities. Uh, the football stadium is top notch. The basketball arena just opened in August. And I'm telling you what, if you could put uh, both those facilities here at UVU, <laughs> you'd cause quite a stir. And Troy switching here, Jim, to a 2-3 zone. Had been playing man previously. They'll give it to UVU. Yeah, well defended there from Troy. That was a lob attempt, getting that ball lobbed up to Zach Jones. Well defended from Troy. Let's see how the Wolverines attack this. They do have four seconds only on the shot clock here. Going to have to have some urgency when they get the ball in. UVU's hit three of their first seven shots. Troy's hit just one of nine. JJ forces it up as the shot clock was running out and got that thing to go. Long two. Wow, ah, great shot. He squeezed in between two defenders. We had a perfect angle to that. What a good shot there from Jason getting right in between the two defenders. Jason Johnson, transfer from Antelope Valley College. Talk about transfers. Calhoun hits the long jumper there. Troy University, 11 out of their 12 players are transfers. Look at JJ driving in, scoring. Yeah, Troy never got back and got set in their transition defense. And Jason just took advantage of that hole in the zone and charged right to the basket. Calhoun misses the three, tipped out to Jones. Fresh 35 for Troy. Both teams showing a little, uh, little more intensity yeah, it now. It definitely has picked up. I, I completely agree with that. Get an offensive foul here. First foul of the game comes with 13:48. Uh, First half left. Troy. I don't know if they wasn't a screen, so it must have just been a little too aggressive as he was posting up. But yeah, you're right. The intensity definitely has picked up. We've seen some 
movement, some transition baskets going up and down the court. And once again, we get this switch back to uh, to man-to-man -man defense. What we saw a lot from the Aggies on Saturday night, they they switched their defenses up on UVU. Fonz shot blocked from behind. That one blocked by Emil Jones. Troy comes away with it. Emil Jones, team's leading scorer and rebounder, kicks it outside. Myers can't get it to go inside. Ball bounces off like a pinball. It'll belong to Troy. Yeah, Antoine Myers it seems like he's going to be very aggressive and always attempting to drive to the basket. Looked like he had an open shot as he's being subbed out of the game here, but looks like that's his game. He's going to try and drive and always be aggressive going to the basket. Taylor Brown, Antoine Hosley into the game. Ben Aird back into the game for UVU. Interesting substitutions early, I think. Calhoun with the jumper for Troy. And I say that because uh, one coach will substitute, and the other one yep. will, will match his move. A little chess match going on. I'm not so sure these two coaches aren't thinking, you know, this might go double overtime again. Yeah. So With the way that the, the previous game went, who knows? Exactly. Taylor Brown feeds Ben Aird inside. Stolen away. Turnover, UVU. Their first. 12.40 left first half. Wolverines nursing a four-point lead. Very low scoring first half thus far. Williams. Goes over the right side to Emil Jones in the lane. Lost the handle. And a foul's gonna be called inside, I think. Officials are now looking at each other to decide who the foul was on. Yeah, see the replay here. Emil Jones getting in the middle of that defense. They're probably, did they call that on Ben Aird? No. Antoine Hosley. Antoine Hosley. Yeah. So, I think is, they had their choice. Yeah, they evidently. did. Yeah, they did. Yet Emil Jones doing a nice penetration, getting a nice penetration into the middle of the defense there. You see everybody having to collapse and a little bit of a late rotation. Yeah, I mentioned how Antoine Myers seems like his game was maybe more penetration game. I think the same can be said for the entire Troy team. You know, we've seen a lot of that action so far, passing up maybe open jump shots, trying to get be more aggressive going to the basket, which could open up layups and you know possibly kick outs for, for open shots as well. Emil Jones, senior out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Gets them both to go, a little four nothing spurt for Troy, draws them to within two. Okay, Avi Enos into the game now for Utah Valley. Did not see action Saturday here at home against Utah State. High post feed, Taylor Brown. Right side to Kayavi. Drives, stops, cut off. 15 seconds shot clock, 12 minutes on the first half game clock. Taylor Brown, Kayavi almost went to his right and ran over Taylor Brown who had been knocked to the ground. You by know, Jeff Malahi. And you know you're a good screener when you set the screen and end up on your back. Another media timeout, just under 12 minutes play. First half, Wolverines leading by two. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Utah Valley with a two-point lead thanks to eight of their ten points coming in the paint. We told you about Troy University. A lot of folks watching perhaps on UBU TV from Alabama don't know much about Utah Valley either here in Orem, Utah, about 45 minutes south of Salt Lake City. Founded in 41. 31 and change, 31,000 and change. 
Wolverines, green and yellow. Great West Conference right now. Western Athletic Conference beginning July 1st. The WAC. 10 to 8, Utah Valley with a two point lead over Troy. Just under 12 minutes left, first half. Thompson's got four points, Ben Aired four, Jason Johnson four. They're the three Wolverines who've scored thus far. There's Antoine Hosley with a three, bottom. Troy coming off that timeout, going back to that 2 3 zone. And I've always said with the Wolverines, they can get just about any shot they want when teams play zone against them because all it takes is patience. It takes good passing, good ball faking, and you can get just about any shot. And Antoine Hosley there proves that fact. Wolverines have made one of two from beyond the arc. Hosley went for the steal, missed it there. Troy's put up four three pointers thus far, missed them all. Eight second shot clock. Jones with it. Excuse me, that's uh, Williams with it. Lob inside to Chambers. Got behind his man. And traveling is the call against Ray Chambers. Yeah, nice job of defense there from UVU. I think you had Antoine Hosley and Ben Aird get caught up in a switch, and you see Antoine Hosley fronting the post there. That ball was just too tall for him to get, and you see Kayavi coming over. But before Kayavi got there on the rotation, uh, call, uh, Ray Chambers called for the travel. A little bounce step maybe? Yeah, we didn't see, we didn't see on the replay. Ben Ayer hits the jumper left side, Big Ben. So after Troy had drawn to within two, Wolverines on a little 5 nothing run to jump out in front, 15-8. Hunter Williams, they list him at six foot. Look at this, Jim. This not is sure. <laughs> all around the perimeter. That was good defense from the Wolverines, not allowing anything. That whole possession was just players dribbling around the perimeter, maybe trying to turn the corner, maybe hand it off to a teammate. But uh, UVU has done a really nice job defending that. A lot of times they just fight around and chase their men around the perimeter. Sometimes they've been switching. Uh, good defensive possessions, a uh, couple in a row here for UVU. Antoine Hosley running point guard while Holton Hunsager on the bench getting a breather. Coming up on the halfway mark here of our first half, Hosley pull up jumper, good, Antoine Hosley. He looks confident when he's shooting that, hit that three-pointer earlier, and now the, the tough shot along the baseline. Play was designed to get him coming around at the very end, a couple really good screens set, but Antoine made it happen with his uh, with his one-on-one -on -one move. Coming off the bench, Antoine Hosley, now the game's leading score with five points. Jethro gives over to Williams. Chambers puts it in the hands of Malahi. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Tried to work it into Chambers. Ball went off Nick Thompson's foot. It'll still belong to Troy with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Malahi comes out. Calhoun comes out. Jethro comes out for Troy. R.J. Scott into the game. A couple of other Troy players. There's Scott with the basketball. First time he's touched it tonight. Goes over to Emil Jones. Goes around Nick Thompson. Shot blocked by Ben Ayer. Hosley's got it. Antoine Hosley will put it up from anywhere. Gives over to Kayabi. He'll drive down the lane, force up the shot. Won't go. Ball batted around, out of bounds. It'll belong to Troy. Good drive there from Kayabi. Looked like he was gathering himself, trying to get in rhythm for the three-point shot, but saw an open lane. Good aggressive drive, just not able to finish, and good effort on the offensive glass. 17 to eight. There you see the three point shooting. A little air ball from Troy. Antoine Hosley can't get that one to go. Nick with the rebound. Tipped up and in though by Ben Aird on second effort. Yeah, you see when, we, when Troy goes to that smaller lineup as we talked about like they started the game with, and UVU has a bigger lineup in, so to speak. They've got post-game inside advantages and advantages rebounding the ball offensively. It's just hard for Troy to, you know, really tough for Troy to get those defensive rebounds. Taylor Brown steps in front of a pass. Another turnover for Troy. Number three on the evening. 8.20 to play, first half. Wolverines on a 9-0 run now. They had led just 10-8. to eight. And as soon as we say that, 
Wolverines go into the backcourt for their turnover, second turnover of the game. 19-8. In that first game, UVU's biggest lead was seven points. Troy's was ten points. So a little bit different here. And it might be my imagination, Matt, but it looks like some Troy players aren't used to playing at uh, altitude. Yeah, they're looking a little a little sluggish. You know, obviously some travel there, but definitely oh. looking a little sluggish out there. And well, that's something, that play right there, something that Wolverines haven't, haven't defended really well is that draw and kick. He had a nice kick out there for a long three-point shot. Troy's got a lot of those threes off of that type of action so far in this game. Scott getting the first three-pointer for Troy to go down. 19 to 11 now, just an eight-point lead for the Wolverines. There's a steal, breakaway, Antoine Myers, easy. Easy two, and Coach Dick Hunsaker not at all happy about that turnover and easy basket. Well, and you look at those, they're really just careless turnovers. The one previously, a, a mishandled pass from Nick Thompson there at the top. The ball dribbles into the back court, and you have a, a pass there. I think Zach Jones was assuming that you know, Holton was going to be open, didn't really have his eyes on Holton before he passed the basketball. And, as you said, Antoine Myers just stepped right in, in and gets the easy, fra uh, easy, fast break dunk. And I take back what I said about Troy looking like maybe they don't like yeah. playing at altitude. All of a sudden, they're rare to go. Well, it's it's true. You've got a point. <laughs> I remember, you know, my years of playing here, we would go down to uh, Texas Pan America in McAllen, Texas, as we're going to take a look at some replays. But when I would go down there and play, I tell you what, I felt like I could run for hours down there because it was you yeah. know, near sea level and. I think there is some merit to that. Back to live action here at the UCCU Center. Utah Valley with a 19-13 lead. Little backcourt pressure. Antoine Hosley across midcourt. Over to Holton. He'll jump a long one. Troy with a rebound. Uh, Troy trying to pick up their aggressiveness. Gets in that press. Uh, but the Wolverines did a great job handling a good shot from Holton. Three-point attempt. No good from R.J. Scott. Troy with a rebound, though. Holton, excuse me, Alfonso Hubbard comes up with a loose ball that time. Turnover on Troy. Seven minutes left here until the teams head to the locker rooms. Holton Hunsaker misses it inside. Might have been partially blocked from behind. Yeah, it looks like he went off his, his wrong foot, too. Three-pointer, Emil Jones will not go. One for eight from beyond the arc is Troy. Hosley got the hot hand. Antoine Hosley, seven points tonight already. He had three in that first game against Troy. He just averages six a game. Junior out of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Nick Thompson comes away with it. Once again there, another drive and kick. Now that was a good play from Antoine. He had, to, he had to come and help down in, but he did a nice job at, at the very last second there, rotating out to the shooter. Ball slapped away from Nick Thompson. They'll call the foul against Antoine Myers of Troy. 6-18 to play, first half, Wolverines out in front, 21-13 here at the UCCU Center. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. Patty Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Coming back here, see a number of the highlights from the Wolverines. Uh, really a lot of highlights of uh, Antoine Holsley playing very well on the offensive end. See a couple long three-point shots. This is the pass from Zach Jones that gets taken away from Antoine Myers. 
All the way for the dunk. Live action now. UVU with the 21-13 lead. Inbounds play. Will not go. Troy with the rebound. Wolverine shooting 47, make it 45%. Troy, though, just shooting 23%. They put up 21 shots and made only five have these Trojans of Troy. Yeah, just another three-point shot miss, so making them one for ten so far in the game from the three-point line. Troy basketball, still 25 seconds shot clock. Sorry, just going to mention on the season, as I pointed out a little earlier, they do shoot 32%, so you know, not the best three-point shooting team. They're not tall, but they are fast. Yeah, and their offense clearly tries to take advantage of that with how they're, you know, how they're running, how they're running their offense and what they're trying to do. Jason. It's not a lot of just dumping it into the post and you know letting a letting a post pair player create. We've seen very little of that. Still Troy basketball, 19 seconds on the shot clock for Troy underneath their own glass. Emil Jones. Wide open jumper from Williams. That's a three. And just as we talk about them not being able to hit any three-point shots being one for ten, they knock another one down. Hunter Williams with the long three-point shot. Wolverines lead is five. Another turnover. Emil Jones doing a nice job reaching in and taking that one away from UVU. R.J. Scott tries to feed inside to him. Wolverines take that one away. Good awareness there from Holden Hunsaker. And Hinton try and slip the screen there, but Holton down low, able to come over and help. Holton Hunsaker has the ball stripped away by Antoine Myers. That is the fifth turnover for UVU. Emil Jones shot bounces around, goes down. Ten to two run right now for Troy. Another turnover. All of a sudden, it's just uh, turnover city. Yeah, the, the problem with the last two passes from Nick Thompson trying to get into Ben Aird, he's been too close to Ben. and makes it really easy for the defender just to kind of suck down. Those passes have been, you know, feet, you know, a few feet apart. It's just been tough to pass. Needs to get a little bit more spacing on those, on those entry passes. And guess what? Another turnover for UVU. On the run, Myers, layup good. UVU led 19 to 8. It's a 12-2 run by Troy. Four minutes and 12 seconds left, and Coach Dick Hunsaker wants to take a timeout, and why not? Yeah, we're going to get some substitutions here. Seven turnovers now for UVU. Well, and that run has been keyed by all those turnovers that yeah. the Wolverines have. It's just, it's been mental mistakes trying to force a pass maybe when there hasn't been anything there and Troy's been very opportunistic with swiping that ball away and being in the right position. Coming up at halftime we'll be joined by Wolverine women's head basketball coach Kathy Nixon. 300 and change and more career victories. She is quite the head coach. It'll be fun to talk to Kathy. UVU's women played earlier this afternoon. And we saw this a little bit earlier from Troy, where you know, maybe after out of a timeout, putting a little bit more full court pressure. Previously, they did more of just a zone pressure. This looks like a little more of a man to man, and the Wolverines don't have any trouble beating it. Wolverines do a good job, as you said, reading the press, and Jeff Malahi reaching in and fouling Colton Hunsaker. His second, team's fourth. 4.07 to play first half. Let's see if the Wolverines, in this last four minutes, Troy's got a little bit of momentum. Let's see what the Wolverines do offensively. Get a little bit more rhythm and you know, stop turning over the basketball. Antoine Hosley's only missed one shot so far. Okay, make it two. Missed that long three. Troy with the rebound. Oh! Driving inside. And one. Or did he make the shot? Yep. They're going to call the foul on Zach Jones. And just like that, UVU trails for the first time tonight. Back in a minute.
Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Wolverines have found themselves in a real battle tonight. A reminder that our next broadcast will come your way Saturday night, just, uh, what, three nights from now, December 22nd. The men's basketball team will take on North Carolina Central University. That is going to be a 4 o'clock tip here at the UCCU Center. 22-21 now. Troy with their first lead of the game after trailing by as many as 11 in this first half. Pretty amazing comeback by Troy, who's currently on a 9 nothing run, make it a 10 nothing run and a 15 to 2 overall run. And the Wolverines on that last possession, unable to get back in their transition defense. And uh, that aided Tevin Calhoun in making the layup and getting to the free throw line. And the pressure here from Troy causes the Wolverines to take a timeout. Coach Dick Hunsager, yeah, forced to take that time out with three minutes, 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, neither one of these coaches are stranger to, I can't imagine either one of them facing a situation that they haven't been in before. Yeah, exactly. I think you can see both coaches have shown a little bit of frustration at different points in the game. Well, obviously, uh, yeah, Coach Dick Hunsager in his 11th season, I mean, his overall record that you see is UVU record there with 192 wins, but overall 359 wins in his career. So he's been around forever. Don Maestri, by the way, for for Troy, 493 wins. Dick Hudsager played a resume, though, coach of the year the last two years in the Great West Conference, actually. Right now, the Wolverines are down by two at home. Son Holton Hunsaker in the backcourt. Gets it across the stripe. Yeah, Holton did a good job there avoiding the corners. You see Troy coming up trying to get some type of a trap and that ball's in the corner, but as soon as Holton sensed that, took it away from the corner and got it in the middle of the court. Holton tries to go inside the Hubbard shot blocked. Hubbard had good position, but coming out of nowhere, Emil Jones blocked that one. Williams goes in the lane and travels. Sixth turnover for Troy. UVU with seven. Well, UVU's just got to stay active. If Troy comes back, see what defense they have. Looks like they're going back to this zone. UVU just has to be active. There's a lot of spaces open on the court. They've got to not just stand in one place, keep that ball moving, keep themselves moving, find those open spaces. Hubbard inside, tried to. I don't know if he was going up with it or trying to get it up to Ben Aird, but it got knocked out of bounds off Ben Aird. So it'll be Troy basketball. Hubbard goes to the bench. Nick Thompson replaces him. That was a good flash by Alfonso. He found the kind of the high post area, free throw area. And there's a lot of space there against his own, as Troy tonight hasn't done a very good job of covering that area. Tevin Calhoun with the basketball for Troy gives over to Jones. Coming up on two and a half minutes left here. First half, jumper outside won't go. Nick Thompson, big man, can dribble. It's over to Holton. Now to Hosley. This is a nice assist to Ben Air. Yeah, really nice pass there. Didn't force anything. Looked like he was going to shoot it, but at the last second, Nice, nice pass off to Ben Aird. Good play there. That stops a 15 to two run that Troy was on. And ties us at 23. I think you said earlier both of these teams <laughs> like a low scoring game, didn't you? Yeah. Definitely getting it so far. And I also said, uh, don't be surprised we go two, three, four <laughs> yeah. overtime, so. Yeah, with the way the game is going, it seems like a sure possibility. Green's gonna get their offense set. See if they look to get that ball inside. Inside the bend, working against two Trojans, Josh Warren. 
But they're going to give the foul to Emil Jones. Again, I think they had their choice that time. Yeah. Good play there, run from the Wolverines to get that ball into the corner to Holden. And Ben acts like he's coming over to set a screen and just really slips to the basket, trying to catch the defense off guard, and they were able to do so. Big Ben misses the free throw. That is Utah Valley's first free throw here in this game. Comes with a minute 40 remaining in the first half. Yeah, once again, uh, we saw this in the Utah State game a couple nights ago, a relatively foul-free half. The first half was you know, foul-free for both teams and against the Utah State game, and same tonight. Ben missed them both. Taylor Brown did a nice job on the offensive glass. Takes it out to Holton Hunsaker. Over to Nick. Twisting. Feeds inside. Ben and one. Ben aired. Nice feed from Nick Thompson. Nick Thompson leading this team in assists this year. Kind of unusual for a 6'10 forward to lead a team in assists. Usually it's your point guard, but Nick Thompson. Great feel for where his teammates are. Holton Hunsaker yet to get on track tonight. No points, but uh, he had 32 in that first game. Yes, he is the son of head coach Dick Hunsaker. Holton has a little brother who's a senior at Orem High School here just up the road. Zach Hunsaker, and Zach, one of the best players uh, in Utah County. Osley for three. There you go. He sure has been the spark tonight, hasn't he? He's come in off the bench and played really well. Hit a lot of hits, hit a couple three-point shots, and uh, just given the offense for the Wolverines some life. Yeah, did not score against Utah State. He wasn't happy with that performance at all. Jumper outside for three. Just short, the Wolverines come away with it. Wolverines leading by five. With just under a minute to play here, first half. There's the hot man again. Posley, he'll take the jumper from there. Missed it. Rebound comes down to Chambers of Troy. Troy just 30% shooting here in the first half. They've put up 30 shots and made nine. They're still in this thing, though, just trailing by five. After the Wolverines have now run off seven straight. 10 second shot clock, 21 on the game clock. First half. Inside feed, Chambers. Shot, good. The Wolverines are going to go for the last second shot here, about 10 seconds left. Important for them to get a good shot. Going to have to hurry and get into their offense here with six seconds left. Chambers' first two points. Hunsaker. Just barely drew front now iron. And that's how we'll send the teams to the locker room with Utah Valley up by three. Very interesting first half here at the UCCU Center. Wolverines looked at first like they were just going to run away with it, leading by 11 points. And Troy fought back and took the lead by two. Wolverines now by three at half. Back with the halftime show in a minute. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. At UVU, you can graduate.
graduate with a diploma and a resume. Back in Orem, Utah, Jim McCall along with Matt Peterson, Utah Valley with a three-point lead over the Trojans of Troy University. 28-25 is the score. Utah Valley came out. Matt, as we said before, went to the break. Looked like they were going to run, run away, and then Troy fought back to take the lead. Uh, lead chase hands twice. It was tied once. Uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, game of runs once again. You know, we just doing these runs back and forth. And uh, for Troy, when they went on their run, it was aided by the turnovers from UVU. They turned uh, eight UVU turnovers into 11 points. Uh, Wolverines turned six turnovers from Troy into uh, two points. So, you know, we we've seen going back and forth here a lot of a lot of movement. Um, yeah, kind of a game of run so far, but you know both teams kind of found their rhythm. I think a little bit more at the end of the game, excuse me, end of the first half, yeah. and you know hopefully that carries over into the second half. And I had talked a couple of times during the game about or first half about intensity. Uh, Troy looked like they were flat. Now all of a sudden, Troy looks like the team that's energized. Yeah, and they got some baskets, and then they went into the the presses. They did that zone press. They yeah. did that man to man press. So they did a couple different things to to energize themselves. And I think UVU did a good job of countering that, you know, by the way that they attacked the press, and then just their overall defensive effort in the first half, I thought was was very impressive. All right, we're going to look at some first half highlights. You walk us through this, what you were just talking about. Yeah, I mean, early on, you see the Wolverines getting a lot of these points at the rim. You know, in the paint, UVU has 14 of their 28 points, so half of their points have been uh, at, at the rim. A good spark for UVU off the bench is that man right there, Antoine Hosley. Ten points, yeah. Ten points. We talked about it, maybe not as one of our keys to the game, but against Utah State, the Wolverines had zero points off of the bench. So to see Antoine come in and have ten points, it's a welcome sign, and he's he's been the catalyst uh, and played very well in the first half. Bolton Hunsaker, 32 points the first game against Troy tonight here at halftime, still scoreless. But he's hustling. You're seeing him diving yeah, all yeah. over the place. You, you don't have to score, and I think he realizes he doesn't have to score points to affect the game. He can do it in other ways. He can do it by getting his teammates open. He can do it by defending. He can do it in a number of different ways. It just doesn't have to be, you know, it just doesn't have to be by scoring points. Well, there you see the stats for UVU. That uh, 13 of 29 equates to 45%. Meanwhile, for Troy, 10 of 31 is 32%. Turnovers, though, pretty big. Eight to six total turnovers. Uh, UVU with a couple of more, but three-point shooting. Both teams making two three-pointers each. Utah Valley hitting two of six. Meanwhile, Troy hitting just two of 14. Free throws, uh, not on the screen there, but Troy made three out of three. Leading score for Troy, by the way, Calhoun with seven points. Myers had four, Jones had six for Utah Valley. Well, two players with 10 points each, starter Ben Aird with 10 points, and Antoine Hosley had 10 points in that first half. 28-25 Utah Valley men's team with a three-point lead at halftime. Hey, we're joined now courtside by uh, one of the best women's coaches I have had the pleasure of knowing. <laughs> and, and that's not her, but that's one of her assistants. <laughs> yeah, she's great too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're joined by Kathy Nixon. Coach, good to see you again, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, Coach Kathy Nixon, uh, I'm going to brag about you just a little bit. Played at BYU, three-time All-American, if I remember correctly, and uh, BYU was pretty darn good when you were there, thanks to you. You come over here, and you've taken that winning attitude that you had as a player and have been able to translate it. 300, what's your total record now? 300? 301 today. Congratulations. Thank 301. you. 301. This, this is amazing to me. I've never met a head coach in my broadcasting career who's won 300 games who doesn't have gray hair. <laughs> so <laughs> Don't look too closely because there's some up there. Stop. We're not, we're not going to talk about that coloring <laughs> yeah. thing that's going on. That's part of the contract here. You would know gray hair, though, right? I, I dye my hair this color to look uh, distinguished. It looks great. How's it working? Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, okay, tell, tell us about the team this year. Uh, Star-wise, Sammy Jensen having a great year again. Sammy is having a great year. She's uh, in the top. I think she's number eight in the country in total double-doubles. Wow. Um, today she broke the single game rebounding record. At, she got 22 rebounds. She actually broke her own rebounding record. She had 21 last year and had 22 today. So she 20, had six, 22 in one game. 22 rebounds today. She had 16 in the first half. Wow. So 
Um, they were they were working really hard to keep her down in the second half, but um, you know she's a special player. She has uh, produced for us every game since she got here uh, as a sophomore. This is just her third year. She also today was recognized for her thousandth point, um, and she did that you know in only but two and a half years. She's got another half of the season to go. So she's she's great. We uh, you know we build a lot of what we do around her, and she's just a fierce competitor and rebounds you know unlike most players I've ever seen honestly now I don't now I'm guessing that you've got some other decent players on the team besides Sammy right we do yeah I think we're a pretty balanced team uh, Sammy I would say is probably our superstar but we have a, a multitude of kids that, that contribute and I think we're best when we do have a balanced scoring you know at, at uh, Northern Arizona on Saturday Sammy had relatively modest numbers but uh, we won by 20 or so and I think we're best when we have a lot of players making contributions. Coach, uh, they're telling me we're out of time. Thanks right. very much for stopping by. Thank Good to you. see you again. Great to see you too. Thank you. Coach Kathy Nixon, women's head coach here at Utah Valley University and uh, one of the best head coaches uh, around. Utah Valley, very impressive performance. We'll take another break. Back with your second half coming up. Wolverines leading the Troy Trojans by three. Come join the student section and cheer for the Mighty Wolverines. Mighty Athletic Wolverine League Sports Passes are now available. Your mall pass gets you tickets to every NCAA home game, free food at the tailgate parties, prizes at the games, and lots of new friends. Get more information on their Facebook page or by calling Campus Connection at 801-863-8797. Go UVU! If you're serious about going to college and getting a head start on the process, come get a feel for what university life is like. UVU Days are designed with you in mind. UVU Days are department-specific events held on Saturdays that will allow you to become a student for a day. These events are free and breakfast and lunch are served. For more information, dates, and times, please visit our website at www.uvu.edu forward slash future students. Come experience what UVU has to offer in your field of study. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Utah Valley with a three-point lead over the Trojans of Troy University here at Orem, Utah. Jim McCall on with Matt Peterson. All right, Matt, you talked about this on our pregame show. How are the Wolverines doing? Yeah, let's talk about the rebounding. They did out-rebound Troy in the first half, 21 to 18. They had six offensive rebounds and 15 defensive rebounds. They did give up six offensive rebounds, however, but that's a good sign that they are out rebounding Troy at this point. Uh, Got to get Ben involved early. I think that they did that. Ben in the first half ended up with 10 points, four rebounds. They may not have run plays for him, so to speak, but I think he did a really nice job of creating his own type of offense, whether it be off of you know, offensive rebounds. And he's just been in good position a lot of times. He's had some really good passes inside to him, and he's been able to finish. And better shot selection, I think that Wolverines have done a good job shooting the ball. They're you know about 45% for that first half. And the better shot part of that, I don't think they've – we've really seen one forced shot. I don't think we've seen one really bad shot that wasn't in the realm of the offense. And so, you know – UVU's done a good job of running their offensive sets, and they've got some really good shots. Ben aired 10 points tonight in the first game against Troy at halftime. He was scoreless, so you're right. Get Ben in the flow of things. Very interesting starting five here for the Wolverines. Look at this. Yeah, they have definitely switched it up a little bit. Hunsaker, Taylor Brown, Antoine Hosley, who's got 10. Ben Aird, who's got 10, and Nick Thompson. 
Nick Thompson takes the first shot of the second half, gets it to go. Yeah, and that's a great play there because you see Antoine Holsley kind of take the ball, dribble back a little bit in motion for Nick Thompson to come into the middle. He made a good hard flash, and Antoine found him with the ball. And, uh, you know, a great play. That's what I've, I've said for so long is there's so much space in the middle around that free throw line. It just takes someone flashing there, and Nick did a nice job on, on that possession. Antoine Hosley, 10 points in 11 minutes in the first half. And now Troy comes out, misses their first jumper. Nick Thompson with a rebound for UVU. Inside Big Ben. Turnaround jumper won't go. Chambers with a rebound for Troy. Troy shot 31% in that first half. Or excuse me, 32%. After they missed that first one here in the second half, they're down to 31% overall. That's been their downfall. They just can't get the ball in the hole right now. Yeah. And a lot of it is this defense like the like the Wolverines are playing. I mean, you force a long three-point shot. You don't allow any penetration from the guards. Has a great defensive possession. We're a minute and a quarter deep into the second half. Wolverines with a five-point lead. Thompson tried to work it into Hosley. Almost on way. Hosley will take a three. Won't go. Tipped out. Troy's got it. Calhoun takes it. Can't get it to go. Picked up by the Wolverines. Yeah, that was a four shot there from Tevin Calhoun. He had a one on two and he tried going to the basket. Holton did a nice job of holding his ground. Kind of swiped at the ball at the last minute. I think threw Tevin's rhythm off a little bit. Lob inside the Big Ben. Nice play from Nick Thompson, Ben Ayers got 12 points. Yeah, that was a well-designed play there because that was clearly a, a post-up trying to get that ball into Ben. And the defender was fronting him, so it just takes a lob pass over top and Ben hold off the defender and ball falls right in your lap at the basket. Ben Ayers and Antoine Hosley between them have made 10 shots. Troy's entire team has made 10 shots. 32-25, two and a half minutes gone, first half. Six seconds on the shot clock for Troy. I'm sure Emil Jones knows about it. Now he does. Inside fee, that one's good. Chambers. Yeah, it looks like Ben lost Ray Chambers just for a split second there because Wolverines once again playing great defense. Ray Chambers just able to sneak along the baseline and Ben not able to get around front. Well, Chambers was the kid who just lit up the Wolverines last week for 17 points down in Alabama. And he had two at half, I believe. Yeah. Look for him to try and be a little more aggressive. Hosley can't get it to go. Emil Jones comes away with a rebound for Troy. Inside the Chambers. Myers with it. Over to Calhoun for the jumper. That was a three. And I don't mean to repeat myself so often, but once again, it's that drawn kick. It's well, if driving, that's what they're doing. Yeah, it's, if that's it's, what they're doing. Yeah. It's driving to the basket and kicking it out. The Wolverines are getting sucked down in to try and help on those drive and penetrations, and it leaves these perimeter players wide open, and that's been a lot of their offense is that drive and kick. Unsacred. Shot blocked at the rim. Out of bounds. It'll be UVU basketball. Holton pleading his case, saying he was fouled, but will not get that call. Hubbard comes in. Taylor Brown will take a seat for the Wolverines. Sixteen minutes, nineteen seconds to play. Wolverines now just up by two. Whistle away from the basketball. Inside foul going to be called against Evil Jones. His second. And I think the point guards for UVU have done a nice job of recognizing what defense Troy has been in because you know they have switched it up a little bit. That previous possession in the zone looks like they're going back to a zone at this point. So you got to recognize it early so you can you know, know what play you're going to run and get into your offense early. Lots of ball movement. Nick Thompson will take a three. Rims off. Troy with a rebound. Yeah, there's a good offensive play. Another drawn kick for UVU that time. Nice job of Antoine Hosley creating an, a, a shot for Nick Thompson. Calhoun buries the three. 
eight nothing run for Troy after being down by seven. Yeah, it seems like Tevin Calhoun's going to be the Ray Chambers of this game because you know, he averages uh, 6.6. .6. Speaking of Tevin Calhoun, he averaged 6.6 .6 points per game coming into this game, and he's got 13. Well, back and forth they go. Holton Hunsaker's first two of the game. Wolverines back out in front by a point. Torrey comes down, misses that one. Jones has it. Did we mention the first game went double overtime, folks? <laughs> Back and forth, they're going here. Ball slapped out by Nick Thompson. Troy basketball. 15-0-1 to play. Wolverines by one. Don't go away. This one is just back and forth. Whoever has the ball last might just win this thing. 34-33. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. At UVU, you can graduate with a diploma and a resume. Utah Valley with a one-point lead. Sometimes, Matt, stats tell a big story as to why certain things are happening. Anything you see there that jumps out at you? These are the season statistics that we're looking at. Uh, very similar. I mean, these teams are very evenly matched. The only difference uh, is the really the field goal shooting percentage is UVU typically shoots a little bit higher percentage on a per-game average. But you know, similar teams. It you know, bears out in that two overtime game and bears out why we've got a one point game tonight. Troy with the basketball, 10 seconds on the shot clock for them. Beat it inside, Chambers. That was the fifth lead change of this game. 35 34, Wolverines now down by one. Hubbard misses inside. Troy saves it. Antoine Myers gives over to Jones. Inside, kicks it out to Myers again. Coming up on 14 minutes left here at the UCCU Center. Myers drives to the baseline and steps on the baseline before he got the, put, uh, the pass away, claiming he, uh, he was pushed. Now we have a tough angle to that, but to me, it looked like he did step out of bounds, and obviously the official has <laughs> a better view of it than I do, but. He was right there. He was right there. Well, let's see if UVU can make it uh, the sixth lead change of this game. Down by one. Inside the net. Hops once, there it is. And that worked so well in the first half. We saw three straight possessions, I believe, in the first half with Nick just posting up. And well, let's see if they go back to that because he clearly has the skill in the paint. And he's been having smaller defenders mashed up on him, giving him a distinct advantage. Thompson, eight points. I was totally screened out by the official who stopped right in front of me. So you folks at home saw that better than I did. Yeah, I think we had a dribble drive there from Mill Jones, Let's see if he came off a screen. We'll get a good look at the replay here, see the drive, and yeah, Ben Air coming in, swiping in at the last minute, hitting him over the head, really. But uh, I don't. I think what happened a little bit earlier on is there was a, a switch that maybe wasn't planned that got Ben over on onto uh, Neil Jones. Ben Aird's first personal foul, free throw missed. Troy tracks it down. 37-36, Wolverines down by one at home. 
Chambers oh, coming in, shot no. Chambers rebound, back up, won't go. Flying through there, Hunter Williams grabs the rebound for Troy. Feeds inside Chambers. Can't get it to go, Zach Jones battling him. Outside to Williams, Dishoff, and one. See the replay and finish here there. Zach Jones being called for the block. Chambers using his head and literally. I don't think they're counting the basket. I think they're saying that there was a foul that occurred on the pass off before the layup was made. So break there for the UVU because that was a late whistle after the initial or after the layup went in, but they called it on the pass off before that. And here we get a traveling call. Yeah, the, the uh, computer monitors in front of us, which are tied into the uh, score that you see on screen, show that Troy leading 39-36. Now they correct it. Troy's now leading 37-36. And that was a shame for Troy because that was an unbelievable series of possessions there. They got a couple offensive rebounds, and they just were on fire on those possessions. They were moving, passing, cutting. They looked great. Hubbard for UVU, working hard inside, can't get it to go, drew the foul. Clock stop with 12.31 to play. Yeah, you see Alfonso just kind of bully his way down in there. Bully in a good way, not in a bad way there, but you know, realize that he did have a smaller defender on him and just backed the defender down. Hubbard on the season, 84% free throw shooter, one of the best on the team. His first trip to the stripe tonight, in fact, Fonz 0 for 4 from the floor, scoreless so far, has pulled down four rebounds. There you go, that breaks the ice. Let's see, we're going to see the replay here, what I was talking about. Alfonso with a nice up and under move there, trying to get the defender in the air. Didn't do so because Neil Jones stayed on the ground, but was able to get around him and go to the basket and gets fouled. That was the third foul on Emil Jones, so he'll go to the bench for Troy. First player in the game with three fouls or more. Let's see what the Wolverines do on defense here. Because I wouldn't be surprised to see Troy go back to what they've been doing. Picks on the ball, as you see here, trying to drive. You get a drive and kick, or you get a drive and dish off. 38-37, the score, Utah Valley, before that three-pointer. 40-38, Troy leading by two. Yeah, it's just that pick on the ball. They come up, they screen on the ball, and they allow, uh, allow a lot of creative offense after that. Thompson drives in. You know, the first half was a lot cleaner than the second half. A lot more contact, a lot more whistles. Yeah, this was a good aggressive play from Nick Thompson. You see how he keeps that ball up high, doesn't bring the basketball down, doesn't offer the defender any type of opportunity to swipe it away from him. And that was a great play from, from Nick there, being aggressive, keeping that ball up high and staying high the whole time even after he was fouled. First foul on Deontay Jethro, third team foul. that free throw, Troy had just matched their biggest lead of the game at two. Nick misses the second one, so it's a one-point game in favor of Troy. With 12 minutes gone. Here we go, another pick on the ball. That time, great takeaway wow. there. See, Hunter Williams did a nice job of taking that ball away from the pick. I think Holton was anticipating that another pick was going to be coming, and Hunter just read Holton and took it away from the pick and had a lane to the basket. Hunter Williams, five points. The three-point lead inside Hubbard. A really nice pass there from Nick. Once again, just another lob over the top. Alfonso able to post up. Troy was fronting the post. They didn't have anybody on the backside to help rotate over. Once again, just a simple pass over top. 11.20 left to play here in regulation. Long jumper outside for three, will not go. Calhoun missing that one. Wolverines with the rebound. Nick Thompson hits the deck hard in the lane. That foul's going to get called against Josh Warren of Troy. I think Nick's okay, but Troy's Tevin Calhoun is the one staying down. 11.09 to play. First, or in this game, Wolverines down. 
by one. about going to college and getting a head start on the process? Come get a feel for what university life is like. UVU Days are designed with you in mind. UVU Days are department-specific events held on Saturdays that will allow you to become a student for a day. These events are free and breakfast and lunch are served. For more information, dates, and times, please visit our website at www.uvu.edu forward slash future students. Come experience what UVU has to offer in your field of study. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Tevin Calhoun just suffering from cramps. You see Don Maestri's resume as head coach at Troy. He's been there 31 seasons. Truly amazing. I mean, you, you, he's, he's coaching players' grand or, or children at this time. Eight-time coach of the year, conference titles, five All-Americans. Amazing man. Amazing coaching job. He doesn't even – he started coaching when he was like eight. Yeah. Looks like he started about coaching before 40. I was on the earth. Oh, stop it, Nick Thompson. Okay, suddenly I feel really old. Thanks, man. 43-42, <laughs> Wolverines back out in front by one. The youngster, Don Maestri's team now with the basketball. Emil Jones. Gives over to Mulvaney. Drive. And good. Tough finish there for Malahi. You see the post up how Jason Johnson had to help down in. That long skip pass forced him to close out to Maestri and was able to make it to the basket. 11th lead change in this game. And we've been tied twice. Back and forth they go. Coming up on 10 minutes left. Nick Thompson. Won't go. Ben Air hits the double follow. Yeah, Wolverines are in a good good offensive rhythm right now. Whether it be the ball is in the hands of Nick Thompson or as you have it there, Ben Aird. And Nick's kind of been the catalyst. Good defensive rotation there from Holton. Holton like almost forcing the turnover. Troy recovers, though. They did have a fresh 35-second shot clock. They don't need it because Chambers takes it in and scores his eighth point of the night. Let's see if they the Wolverines see if they get the ball trying to get it inside to Ben or to somehow get that ball into Nick Thompson's hands. Hubbard for three. Won't go. Troy with the rebound. Oh, 46-45. Troy has come from Alabama. Here to Utah made the trek yesterday. There's only about a 50 degree difference between the two locations today. And some big mountains too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, when I was at Troy last week, didn't see any mountains. <laughs> Saw lots of trees though. It was great to be back in the south. Jumper, baseline, Malahi. Three point lead. Their largest. Matches their largest. Troy back in this 2-3 zone. Wolverines once again just need to be patient. Hunsaker misses the three-point attempt. Nick Thompson with the rebound. Going back up with it. He's fouled. That one's going to go against Ray Chambers. The long three-point shot means, sorry, Jim, long three-point shot means, you know, high, long rebounds. and. Nick, John, Nick Thompson with a wonderful job of skying for the rebound and going right back up. Ray Chambers, pretty good game. Eight points, ten rebounds for Troy. He had 17 points and eight rebounds in the first matchup between these two. I don't think it's going to be long before we see Tevin Calhoun come back into the game. He's the leading scorer tonight, 16 points, probably played the best for Troy. So 
coming down a little, a little over eight minutes left. Wouldn't be surprised to see him back in there soon. Nick Thompson gets them both to go. Pulls the Wolverines to within one. 20 left. Juan Myers gives over to Jones. Long three-pointer, R.J. Myers will not go. R.J. Scott, rather, will not go. Wolverines with it. Yeah, that's a good team rebound. That's what UVU is going to have to have the last eight minutes. They've got to have everybody active on the defensive glass. Hunsaker, long two. Wolverines back out in front, thanks to Holton's fourth point of the night. Wolverines four straight points now. Shot blocked. Hubbard went up from behind, blocked the shot from Chambers. 7.40 left to play. Wolverines now back out in front by one. 14 lead changes in this game and two ties. Don't go away. It's not over. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. If you're serious about going to college and getting a head start on the process, come get a feel for what university life is like. UVU Days are designed with you in mind. UVU Days are department-specific events held on Saturdays that will allow you to become a student for a day. These events are free and breakfast and lunch are served. For more information, dates, and times, please visit our website at www.uvu.edu forward slash future students. Come experience what UVU has to offer in your field of study. A reminder about uh, upcoming games here on UVU TV, North Carolina Central on Saturday afternoon. That's a four o'clock tip here at the UCCU Center. Then uh, the following four games are all Great West Conference games. NJIT, Houston Baptist, Pan Am, and Chicago State. And then closing out the TV portion on March 9th against Cal State Bakersfield, one of those teams that will be joining Utah Valley in the WAC next season. Holton Hunsaker. Four points tonight on two of seven shooting, yet to get a three-pointer to go down. But the Wolverines with a one-point lead, 49-48. Seven and a half minutes left to play here in Orem. Ben Air trying to stop Chambers. Kicks it out, three-point attempt. That one's good. R.J. Scott. Yeah, once again, it's UVU defenders getting sucked into the paint. You, know, you see that move from Ray Chambers in the paint, causing the defenders to maybe lose a little bit of focus of the perimeter players getting sucked down in, and it's a kick out to the perimeter player for the three, and another turnover here for the Wolverines. Turnover number nine for UVU. Seven minutes left. Wolverines are down by two. Wolverines have led by as many as 11. Troy's biggest lead has been three. That was a couple of times, several times in this game. R.J. Scott hit that last three. 15 second shot clock. Myers working against Ben Ayer. Kicks out to Jones. Got the jumper to go. That's their biggest lead right there, 53-49. Four-point lead for Troy. Wolverines with their five starters on the floor right now. Inside to Ben, turn around, jump hook. Maybe a little too far for that jump hook. He, I think so, yeah. I think that that was maybe more of a forced shot. I, I think you're right. He didn't. Further than he wanted yeah, to it's be, a, I think. It's a tough shot. You know, you're back facing the basket, and then you turn around. If it's a little closer, it's a lot easier. But 
a little too far out from Ben there and comes up short. Now this pick on the pick on the ball, how they defend that is going to be critical for the Wolverines here. And you see these switches that take place, and guards are now down in the post, post oftentimes guarding Ray Chambers. Four seconds to shoot. Will not go, follow won't go. Nick Thompson with the rebound for UVU. Come on, Ray. Let's see what the Wolverines can muster on offense here because this zone has got them a little bit out of sorts. Slowed them down. They haven't been as aggressive, more perimeter oriented. That's what they need right there, driving to the basket. Great job of seeing the space in the zone, driving to the basket by Jason Jones. Excuse me, Jason Johnson. That's why I call him JJ. That's easier, isn't it? That's a lot easier. <laughs> we have, there's a Jason Johnson and there's a Justin Johnson. I get confused with the names. Justin on the team, but uh, redshirting, hopefully redshirting. They won't need him this season, so he'll still have four years when he gets back from his LDS mission. Free throw missed by JJ, so it remains 53-49. Second half shooting, Utah Valley 42%. Troy 48%. The difference is Troy's put up 25 shots. UVU's put up 19. So Troy's getting a lot more aggressive. Yeah, you know, 13 offensive rebounds. That'll do it, yeah. Yeah, that, that gives you just those extra possessions that you're looking for. Jumper climbs up over for Antoine Myers. The five-point lead, their biggest. Just under five minutes to play. Troy's coming here from Alabama, got the lead over the hometown boys. Jason Johnson drives in. Thompson crashes into Josh Warren. And they're going to call the foul on Nick Thompson. Yeah, you see the ball rotate over to Nick Thompson. Good job of rotating over there from Josh Warren and Nick Thompson in the air. Josh Warren takes a knee to the chest, it looked like there. Good job of rotating over. Now this is a critical time, I feel, for the Wolverines because five-point lead, they've just really struggled to get a defensive stop, and they almost have one there. 55-50. It'll be UVU basketball. When Troy has the ball and Ray Chambers is not in the basketball game, they do a lot of lot less screening. It's more five out, five motion, dribble handoffs, getting weave around the perimeter and trying to create some type of offense off of that. Hunsaker. Holton Hunsaker's first three-pointer of the night. Pulls the Wolverines to within two, just under four to play. There's a lot of this isolation too. Good cutting, good, good passing there, but a lot of isolation plays, a lot of spacing for Troy, but a you know, missed layup there, a good break for UVU. Hosley. Got 10 points coming off the bench. Three and a half minutes to play, 18 seconds shot clock. Inside Ben, over to Nick. Shot won't go, got a follow up, but it won't go, and it'll belong to Troy. Wow, Wolverines working hard for everything they get inside. Some of them just won't go down. 55-53. Troy with a two-point lead. 323 to play here in Orem, Utah. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. graduate with a diploma and a resume. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, 
and most dynamic universities. Here's Troy's next five games, Florida Atlantic, North Texas, Arkansas Little Rock, Louisiana Monroe, and Florida Atlantic. Spread out over holidays and then halfway through January. Three of those are at home. Right, right now, Troy uh, with a two-point lead over Utah Valley. And there you see UVU's next five games. Carolina Central on Saturday, then Austin P and Chattanooga, Tennessee is part of the Dr. Pepper Classic. Then depending on who wins between Chattanooga and High Points, who they'll play on the 29th. NJIT and uh, University of Missouri, Kansas City, January 9th in Kansas City. Well, right now, you know, I'm still thinking this one is a long, long way from over, as in overtime. We've said, what, four times now? Yeah. Troy fighting inside, turnover. Wolverines on the run, Hosley. Could not get it to go. Troy coming back the other way. It's a two-point lead for the Trojans of Troy. Under three minutes to play now. Well, let's see what they do here with Ray Chambers back in the ball game. I think they'll eventually work the ball around to get him to come up to set the screen. Looks like that's what we're going to get right here. Watch the roll after he sets the screen, roll into the basket or a kick out to a perimeter player. Wolverine's not forced to switch on that possession. And they're just setting these screens. He's coming up. They're planning on him rolling to the basket, maybe those kick outs on offense. Jones puts it up with three seconds left on the shot clock. Troy will have a fresh 35 seconds to work with, with 2.15 to play. And Troy with a two-point lead over the hometown Wolverines. I mean, look at their spacing right now. They, they don't have a player within 10 feet of the paint. They're just, that's what they do. They space it. It makes it hard to defend. It makes it hard to rebound. When you have this type of spacing, it gives them so much room to crash the glass. And once again, here comes another screen on the ball. Williams over to Emil Jones, five seconds to shoot. Hits it up, gets his own rebound. Shot partially blocked. Troy with skying and getting the rebound is Tevin Calhoun. That gives him another fresh shot clock to work with. A minute 38 left. That time Holton Hunsaker just grabs a hold of Antoine Myers. Wouldn't let him go around him. Fourth team foul, first foul on Holton with 136 to play. Now these offensive rebounds that UVU's given up have just really hurt them the last couple possessions. I believe they've had two straight possessions of offensive rebounds. Not only does it waste and use time off of the clock when Troy's got the lead, they get another shot clock reset here off of the foul. And just another possession that UVU has to play defense on. 17 of those offensive rebounds for Troy. Jumper outside, Calhoun. Still bouncing around, won't go down. Wolverines with the rebound. A minute 15 left. Wolverines need two to tie it. Yeah, they need to show a little more urgency on offense here. Troy going to a man defense here, switching out of the zone that they've previously been playing. One minute inside, Hubbard got it to go. We're tied at 55. Great play there from Alfonso. He was the first leg of a screen that Holton was going to be coming off of. He saw that the defenders chased, and all he did was simply step in and flash to the basket. Well, nobody was guarding him, and a nice find from Nick Thompson inside. Nick Thompson's fourth assist ties this game at 55 with 50 seconds to play. Coach Don Maestri of Troy took the timeout. You'll see, look at that pass. Well, yeah, you see Holton trying to, you know, there's there's the open space. Alfonso was setting the first leg of that screen, designed to get Holton coming off of a double screen. And, and when you set that screen, there's a lot of space there. And he did a nice job of just simply stepping up, making himself available, and gets rewarded. So a couple of things I think, Jim, here with 50 seconds left, 28 seconds on the shot clock. Now, to me, it's going to be about a couple things for UVU in the last little bit. It's going to be about how well can they defend one-on-one -on -one in space, yep. how well can they defend the pick on the ball if it happens, which it's highly likely to, and how well are they going to be able to rebound because they've given up, they've been given up a lot of offensive rebounds. So I think those three things are going to be very key for them defensively. You know, offensively, 
Chances are they're going to get another opportunity here, but take care of that basketball. Just be sound and be fundamental here. But you know, first things first, can't get ahead of ourselves. Got to, they've got to make sure that they get some stop on the defensive end. Three turnovers in the second half for Troy, just two for the Wolverines. So second half, both teams taking care of it. We're tied at 55, 50 seconds left to play. Yeah, and Troy with 17 offensive rebounds. <laughs> they, they've done an unbelievable job. They've taken over the total rebound edge here with, uh, with all those offensive rebounds they've got. Troy's got 28 seconds on the shot clock, 50 seconds on the game clock. Tied at 55. Myers has it, working against Hosley. Right side over to Williams. Tries to feed inside to Chambers. Lost it momentarily, ball on the floor. Gathered it by Jones, now they're diving for it, a whistle. Now they're gonna call this on Holton. That's unfortunate, that shouldn't be a foul. You see him come diving in at the last minute. Now, wow. he kind of did take out the legs, but tough call in that situation because it's a loose ball and both players are going for it. Hard, hard to fault either player in that situation. Really nice job from UVU defending the pick on the ball and defending the dump in to Ray Chambers. They had some good rotation. The initial shot wasn't there and you know, good defense. Kind of negative here for UVU because this now negates the fact that they may get the ball back. You've got 30, you know, just under 35 seconds, so Troy can hold for the last shot if they want. Coach Dick Hunsaker, somewhat disbelief that call was made, and the official had to give a pretty lengthy description of wh what the call was, and I don't think Coach still understood yeah. it. Well, you can see clearly on the replay that Holden did, you know, yep. in diving for the basketball, but he didn't dive into the player. He dove, and the player was momentum carried him into him, and caused him to fall over and that's where they they called the foul. You Re see it you see it once again time. here, yeah. I mean you'll see Holton go diving straight for the ball, both players going after it and yeah, yeah. tough call there because Holton made a, a straight line effort to the basketball and he had Emil Jones going over over top of him. His momentum carried it into it. Second foul for Holton. That, that overtime you've been talking about, Jim's looking really nice here. I think if the Wolverines can get a a stop, the Troy probably will likely, you know, save for the last second if that's what you know, I'm sure that's what they're planning to do. Save it for you know, don't give the Wolverines a, another opportunity for a shot here. Fifth but, team foul of the half on UVU. Yeah, and that's critical too because, no, I guess you're right. Five team fouls, so they do have one to give if right. they need to, but they they likely won't do that. But. And just staying, staying solid on defense here is going to be the main, main key. 34 seconds left. Tied at 55. Troy looks like they're just going to go for one to me. Myers has it. 20 seconds left. Takes a glance up at that shot clock, gives it over to Jones. Got him spread out. Yeah, you're going to get Ray, I think Ray Chambers is going to come up and set a screen possibly. Nope, looks like he's going to stay down. Five seconds, and Hubbard reaches in, and there's that one foul to give before Emil Jones can penetrate or get anything going. Yeah, good play there from Alfonso. I'm sure Coach Hunsaker told him to do that where he was so far out from the basket. Smart play, so now they have to burn some time just getting the ball inbounds. Yeah. 4.8 seconds to play in regulation. Coach Dick Hunsaker wants to take a timeout. The chess match continues between Dick Hunsaker and Don Maestri. Yeah, good play defensively. That's what you like to see because and now obviously Troy has less than five seconds. I think what you're going to see on the out-of-bounds play, obviously no fouls, but you're going to see UVU really try and deny every passing lane in. Whoever's defending the ball, you're going to see a really tough denial, and you're going to see all the other players you know, trying to do their best to avoid any type of inbound pass or easy inbound pass for that matter. Key is to not gamble on that either. You right. don't want to you don't want to gamble and you know leave a leave a lane open for the offensive player. Calhoun has got the hot hand. He's got 16 points for Troy. Jones with 10. They're the two players in double figures. 
Now see what they do here. They're going to inbound it on the side. They would have time for some type of screen on the ball, but maybe they're just going to get the ball into Emil Jones' hands and let him try and create one-on-one. -on -one. 4.8 seconds to play. Emil Jones working hard. He'll take the jumper. And guess what, folks? We are headed to overtime. Oh, my goodness. We t <laughs> you know, I, you I can imagine. It. You I can called imagine. it the whole game. People, we were talking about People that. sitting at home going, I wish he'd shut up about going to overtime. And guess what? We're going to overtime. Ten days ago, down in Troy, Alabama, these two teams went to double overtime. At the end of regulation in Troy, it was 66-66. Here, a slightly lower scoring game at 55-55. In the first overtime, both teams scored seven points. And then in the second overtime, UVU went on an 8 nothing run and uh, ended up winning at 86-82. Yeah. There was a little bit of discussion there uh, to our left between the coaches and uh, some folks here who run the music. The music was still playing while Troy was inbounding that basketball and going up for that shot. The music is supposed to stop. Yeah, and it did not. I didn't notice that good pickup there. I did see one of the one of the officials make sure to tell him that the that the music was shut off. You know, yep. let's let's go back to that last possession real quick because that was great individual defense from Alfonso Hubbard. You know, the ball went into Emil Jones's hand near the half court line, and it's simply just one on one basketball at that point. And Alfonso did it a great job, not allowing Emil to get past him. And he forced a tough shot just inside the three-point line. Perfectly defended from Alfonso. Didn't let, you know, got a good hand up, good shot pressure. So, you know, give a lot of credit to him for getting us into the overtime because it was a great individual defensive effort. Five minutes on the clock for overtime. Third overtime game of the year for Utah Valley. They have won both of their overtime games. Second time that Troy's gone OT. They lost it to Utah Valley, but coming right out of the gate, Hunter Williams buries the three. Yeah, big shot to start the start the overtime here. It's again, it's overloading one side of the court, trying to get their guards in, in some action. Big man came up to set a screen, but it wasn't needed as Hunter Williams hit the three. Hunsaker, baseline, jumper, good. Hunsaker basically won the game in overtime at Troy. Only nine points tonight, but if he gets hot, look out. Troy with a one-point lead. You see how UVU, they've been doing it nearly the whole second half. They've done a lot of switching. Whoever sets the screen or whoever is rolling, you see some mismatches there height-wise off of all the screens and all of the switching that's done. Driving, and finally Calhoun gets the shot to go. Calhoun, 18 points. More importantly, his Trojans of Troy with a three-point lead inside. Ben Air shot partially blocked. Troy comes away with it. Good play run there. Looks like Troy was able to converge on Ben at the last moment, not allow him to get an open layup. Chambers wide open inside. Just like that, 62-57 from Coach Dick Hunsinger. Very quick to jump up and call a timeout. Not at all happy with his players. So we've seen that play run so many times in tonight's game, but that's really one of the first times that we've seen the roll man or Ray Chambers, after he sets the screen, get rewarded with the pass. See a number of different highlights here from the second half, but when he comes up, he sets that screen every single time. He's rolling to the basket. That time, just a late rotation from Ben getting back on, on the help there. And the roll man got rewarded that time like he hadn't been many times before. Good to see his, pay, his hard work, all the screens that he set pay off for him. Sixty-two fifty-seven. The five-point lead for Troy matches their largest of the game. And it comes here in overtime number one, let's call it. And the Wolverines need to be aggressive here. They don't need to panic. They don't need to force anything. There's plenty of time still here left in the game, but you know, each possession is, is very critical. 
Holton will take the jumper from there. Got the hot hand. Holton Hensager's got all four of UVU's points here in the overtime period. Three point lead for Troy with three minutes to play. Williams working against Hosley. Takes it back outside to Jones. See, this is that switch. Ben guarding Emil Jones, and they're likely going to just switch back. Myers with the baseline drive. Working back over to Jones for the hanging jumper. Nope. And Wolverines come away with it. Two and a half minutes left in overtime. Wolverines down by three. Holton Ensager calls the place for the Wolverines. Puts it in the hands of Ben Air. Now to Hosley. 15 second shot clock. Take a long jumper out front, miss it. A whistle way over in the corner, though. Yeah, I think you're going to get an off the ball foul. Antoine Myers. He was, you know, once again, Wolverines go to this common play that they have where they're setting a double screen for Holton. Holton did a nice job. You'll see him coming underneath, trying to come off a double screen. And you can't Antoine, even see Holton in the replay. Yeah, I think that may have been the possession before. Yeah. He came along the baseline and coming off a screen, Antoine Myers a little bit too aggressive in chasing and got between Holton and Ben, I believe, who was setting the screen and Antoine fouled. Holton Hensaker pulls the Wolverines to within two. Second free throw on its way, also good. Yeah, good couple possessions defensively for UVU. They've done a nice job of defending the pick on the ball. Let's see if they can put one more stop here together. Two minutes left in overtime. One point lead for Troy. Williams. Right side to Jones. Jumper up top for three. No. Rebound. Fought for. It'll belong to UVU. Hubbard, tremendous play as that ball was headed out of bounds. Yeah, great job of screening, kind of holding off the defender without fouling. But, you know, as you said, great job of Alfonso holding his ground here. And you know, UVU, as a result of their defense and some timely offense here, could take the lead with a basket here. Holton Hunsinger with all six points in overtime for the Wolverines. That one kicked out of bounds by Jones. A minute 30 left, 21 seconds on the shot clock for UVU. And that was another common play that they've run a couple times tonight, trying to get Nick Thompson the ball at the free throw line. Ben underneath on the on the blocks tries to duck duck in, and Nick getting the pass in there, but uh, that ball kicked away. Antoine Hosley, cross court pass, Hubbard inside feed Ben Aird, turnaround jumper, climbs the rim and one. Wolverines, six straight points. After trailing by five, they now lead by one in overtime. Yeah, I really think that that play was set up by that skip pass that Antoine Hosley made. He made the skip, cast, uh, skip pass across the court against the zone defense. Alfonso got the ball, didn't hold on to it, immediately passed in because the defense doesn't have time to rotate around to Ben. And Ben just makes a strong move. So well, that whole play, a lot of it's set up by that long skip pass. Minute 15 to play in overtime. Wolverines back out in front by two. Jones with it. Picks it outside to Williams. Williams drives in off the glass. The kiss is good. We're tied at 64. He's made a couple really tough shots, has Williams. That time, once again, looks like he went off the wrong foot, falling away from the basket and banked it in. That's a really tough shot. Under a minute to play in overtime. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 46 on the game clock. Nick Thompson directing traffic for the Wolverines. Gives it over to Holton. Inside to Hubbard. Yeah. Wolverines by two. Shot clock is off. Wasting no time, driving down. Jones, no. Rebound, out of bounds. Wolverine basketball. Yeah, what a run put to get together here from UVU. 
Now for you, UVU inbounding the ball here, you're going to get full court pressure here from Troy. They're going to attempt, looks like they're going to call a timeout, but full court pressure, you're going to get full denial again from Troy. When that ball gets inbounds, they're going to be swiping at it. They're going to be trying stealing that ball away. Stay out of the corners if you're UVU, try and keep that ball in the middle. And obviously you got the 10, second, 10 seconds to get it across court, but I wouldn't doubt to see Troy foul here really quickly. What a college basketball game here in Orem, Utah. 16 lead changes, four ties. We're in overtime, 66-64. Utah Valley with a two-point lead. Now, on that last possession, Jim, offensively, Wolverines once again went to that play where Holton is coming off of the screen. I didn't, I didn't quite see if it was a double screen or if it was a single screen, but he came off of that screen. As you see here, watch the defense come suck up because Holton comes off of that and a great awareness, great dump off there to Alfonso for the layup because uh, you have to have, when Holden beats his man around that screen, you have to have help defense and just a great dump off. Final 24 seconds of this one. Hosley in the backcourt and Troy reaches in. Hunter Williams stopping the clock. 22.1 seconds left. That'll put Hosley at the free throw line for the first time tonight. On the season, Hosley, 64% free throw shooter. He's only been to the stripe 11 times this season. Made seven of them. Antoine Hosley, junior transfer from Washington. Grew up in Portland, Oregon. Misses. And will not get another. Troy with a rebound. Trailing by two. 15 seconds left here in overtime. Williams working against Ben Air. Eight seconds. Driving in. Kicking out. Here's a three pointer. No. Ben Air with the rebound, and he's fouled with less than a second to play. Oh my goodness. Troy had a chance to win this rascal on this three. Yeah, and, you know, great shot but I think a very good challenge there from Nick Thompson. You see him get out, vertical hand right straight up in the air. Did a very nice job of recovering to the corner for challenging that three-point shot, but as you said, wow. Calhoun yeah. could not get it to go down. You know, Troy's had those shots at the end of regulation. You, know, you have Emil Jones rimming one out. Wow, Ben Aird only one of four from the free throw line tonight. Yeah, one of five now, it remains a two-point game with 0.7 seconds to play. Coach Don Maestri jumps up and says, I want to take a timeout. Now we're going to talk about what happens if he makes it or if he misses it. And the strategy is, you know, if you miss it, I don't know if you can get a shot off in 0.7 yeah, seconds. Yeah, and if you do, it's just a simple catch it and turn it and throw it, yeah. you know. So, but if he makes it, it's a three-point lead for the Wolverines, and, you know, then you can take another timeout set up a play to at least get your three. Yeah. Well, and I don't know what Coach Hunsaker is going to do in this situation. I don't know if he would coach Ben to miss the, the shot or if he would tell him to, uh, you know, to make that. So let's see what Ben does. I'm sure he's going to try and go for it. But once again, you see the shot here from Tevin Calhoun. That shot, look at that thing, Jim. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's in the basket. Wow. That rimmed around three quarters of the rim before it came out. That's just an unlucky break. That was a good play by Hunter Williams creating that shot by driving the baseline, the nice baseline pass. It's just unfortunate for Troy that that shot didn't, didn't go down, but a you know, good break for UVU crashing the glass, not allowing any type of offensive rebounds. Ben Aird, crucial free throw on its way. Yeah. yeah. Now it's a three-point lead for the Wolverines. And there's that Troy timeout we were talking about. So they'll set up a play. I mean, it's basically just throw it in to somebody yeah. and take a three. Well, I Turn think around and take a three. Yeah, and, you know, obviously for UVU, don't foul no matter what. You know, try and get some type of shot pressure. Get get shot pressure up on, on whoever's going to be shooting it because, you know, I don't – I know – some rules state that you can have a certain amount of time on the clock in catch and release with, with it counting, but you know, this is simply just going to be a catch and release. So you know, Wolverines will, will attempt that. It's going to be a long, have to be a long three-quarter court pass to, to attempt that. Three-point shooting tonight for Troy. They are 7 of 25. 
Calhoun's made three. Williams has made two. Scott has made two. He's on the bench. So you got to figure at this point it's going to be Calhoun or Williams. Yeah. No, I think Calhoun's been the best player for Troy tonight. He's he's clearly been over and above what his average uh, performances have been. You know, you, 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 there's so many different plays that could be run here. You know, obviously with inbounding it, you may get some type of up screen or some type of back screen, get a player running to the basket. I bet you Troy calls another timeout once they see the Wolverines defense. Yeah, it looks like they are going to do that. They're going to put the ball in the hands, though, of Jones, who will toss it in with Ben Aird right in his face. Looking for somebody to get it to, and he does take that timeout. So that was the strategy. If you find somebody, get it to him. If you can't, take the timeout. Yeah. That's their last timeout. Yeah, good job there from UVU. Good job from UVU there, making it difficult, not allowing anything easy there. You see the setup that they had. They had three guys evenly spaced. Speaking of Troy, they had three guys evenly spaced at the, at the half court line, and they had Emil Jones entering the ball at that point. And they had uh, Tevin Calhoun way off in the corner. So, you know, interesting to see what they draw up here. I remember when I played, we would drop and we would practice these type of shots and these type of situations. So, you know, I'm sure that they'll have some plan in mind as far as what they're going to do. And just key for you, you don't foul in this instance. Whatever you do, you know, do not foul. Don't give them any type of opportunity to go to the free throw line. This is it. Both teams out of timeout. Something's got to happen here. 0.7 seconds left to play. Jones running the baseline, throws it in. There's Calhoun slapped away from him. And ball game is over. I think the Troy Trojans were looking for a foul on that one as Calhoun went for it and was sort of bumped from behind, but they're not going to get that call here. So in overtime, the Wolverines survive. 67-64. Wolverines win it in overtime. Wolverines improve 6-7. and seven. Thanks for being here. Broadcast copyrighted by UBU. For Matt Peterson, Jim McCullough from Orem, Utah, thanks for being here. <laughs>